Karl Barth, German, Bati, the 10th of May 1886, May 10th 1886, the 10th of December 1968, December 10th 1968, was a Swiss reformed theologian who is often regarded as the greatest Protestant theologian of the 20th century. His influence expanded well beyond the academic realm to mainstream culture, leading him to be featured on the cover of Time on April 20, 1962. Beginning with his experience as a pastor, Barth rejected his training in the predominant liberal theology typical of 19th century European Protestantism. He also rejected more conservative forms of Christianity. Instead he embarked on a new theological path initially called dialectical theology due to its stress on the paradoxical nature of divine truth e.g., God's relationship to humanity embodies both grace and judgment. Many critics have referred to Barth as the father of neo-orthodoxy, a term that Barth emphatically rejected. A more charitable description of his work might be, a theology of the word. Barth's work had a profound impact on 20th-century theology and figures such as Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who supported the Confessing Church, Thomas F. Torrance, Reinhold Niebuhr, Jacques Ellul, Stanley Hoerwas, Hans Kung, Jürgen Moltmann, and novelists such as John Updike and Miklos Schenkuthi. Barth's unease with the dominant theology which characterized Europe led him to become a leader in the Confessing Church in Germany, which actively opposed Adolf Hitler and the Nazi regime. In particular, Barth and other members of the movement vigorously attempted to prevent the Nazis from taking over the existing church and establishing a state church controlled by the regime. This culminated in Barth's authorship of the Barmen Declaration, which fiercely criticized Christians who supported the Nazis. He was one of the most prolific and influential theologians of the 20th century. Barth emphasized the sovereignty of God, particularly through his reinterpretation of the Calvinistic doctrine of election, the sinfulness of humanity, and the infinite qualitative distinction between God and mankind." His most famous works are his The Epistle to the Romans, which marked a clear break from his earlier thinking, and his massive thirteen-volume work Church Dogmatics, one of the largest works of systematic theology ever written. <laughs> Early life and education Karl Barth was born on May 10, 1886, in Basel, Switzerland, to Johann Friedrich Fritz Barth and Anna Katharina Sartorius Barth. Fritz Barth was a theology professor and pastor who would greatly influence his son's life. In particular, Fritz Barth was fascinated by philosophy, especially the implications of Friedrich Nietzsche's theories on free will. Barth spent his childhood years in Bern. One of the places at which he studied was Marburg University, where he was taught for a year by the Jewish Kantian thinker, Hermann Cohen. From 1911 to 1921 he served as a reformed pastor in the village of Safenwil in the canton of Argau. In 1913 he married Nelly Hoffman, a talented violinist. They had a daughter and four sons, one of whom was the New Testament scholar Marcus Barth October 6, 1915 to July 1, 1994. Later he was professor of theology in Göttingen 1921 to 1925, Münster 1925 to 1930 and Bonn 1930 to 1935 in Germany. While serving at Göttingen he met Charlotte von Kirschbaum who became his longtime secretary and assistant. She played a large role in the writing of his epic The Church Dogmatics. He had to leave Germany in 1935 after he refused to swear allegiance to Adolf Hitler and went back to Switzerland and became a professor in Basel 1935 to 1962. Barth was originally trained in German Protestant liberalism under such teachers as Wilhelm Hermann, but he reacted against this theology at the time of the First World War. His reaction was fed by several factors, including his commitment to the German and Swiss religious socialist movement surrounding men such as Hermann Kutter, the influence of the biblical realism movement surrounding men such as Christoph Blumhardt and Soren Kierkegaard, and the effect of the skeptical philosophy of Franz Overbeck. Kierkegaard's influence on Barth's early theology is evident in the Epistle to the Romans. The early Barth read at least three volumes of Kierkegaard's works, Practice in Christianity, The Moment, and an anthology from his journals and diaries. Almost all key terms from Kierkegaard which had an important role in the Epistle to the Romans can be found in Practice in Christianity. 
The concept of the indirect communication, the paradox, and the moment of practice in Christianity, in particular, confirmed and sharpened Barth's ideas on contemporary Christianity and the Christian life. The most important catalyst, however, was Barth's reaction to the support that most of his liberal teachers voiced for German war aims. The 1914 Manifesto of the 93 German Intellectuals to the Civilized World carried the signature of his former teacher Adolf von Harnack. Barth believed that his teachers had been misled by a theology which tied God too closely to the finest, deepest expressions and experiences of cultured human beings, into claiming divine support for a war which they believed was waged in support of that culture, the initial experience of which appeared to increase people's love of and commitment to that culture. Much of Barth's early theology can be seen as a reaction to the theology of Friedrich Schleiermacher. The Epistle to the Romans Barth first began his commentary The Epistle to the Romans Ger. Der Romerbrief in the summer of 1916 while he was still a pastor in Safenwil, with the first edition appearing in December 1918 but with a publication date of 1919. On the strength of the first edition of the commentary, Barth was invited to teach at the University of Göttingen. Barth decided around October 1920 that he was dissatisfied with the first edition and heavily revised it the following 11 months, finishing the second edition around September 1921. Particularly in the thoroughly rewritten second edition of 1922, Barth argued that the God who is revealed in the cross of Jesus challenges and overthrows any attempt to ally God with human cultures, achievements, or possessions. The book's popularity led to its republication and reprinting in several languages. In the decade following the First World War, Barth was linked with a number of other theologians, actually very diverse in outlook, who had reacted against their teacher's liberalism, in a movement known as dialectical theology, G.E.R. Dialectische Theologie. The members of the movement included Rudolf Bultmann, Eduard Thernissin, Eberhard Griesbach, Emil Brunner, and Friedrich Gogarten. <laughs> Barmen Declaration In 1934, as the Protestant Church attempted to come to terms with the Third Reich, Barth was largely responsible for the writing of the Barmen Declaration Ger. Barmer Erklaring. This declaration rejected the influence of Nazism on German Christianity by arguing that the Church's allegiance to the God of Jesus Christ should give it the impetus and resources to resist the influence of other lords, such as the German Führer, Adolf Hitler. Barth mailed this declaration to Hitler personally. This was one of the founding documents of the Confessing Church and Barth was elected a member of its leadership council, the Bruderat. He was forced to resign from his professorship at the University of Bonn in 1935 for refusing to swear an oath to Hitler. Barth then returned to his native Switzerland, where he assumed a chair in systematic theology at the University of Basel. In the course of his appointment he was required to answer a routine question asked of all Swiss civil servants, whether he supported the national defence. His answer was, yes, especially on the northern border. The newspaper Neue Zürcher Zeitung carried his 1936 criticism of Martin Heidegger for his support of the Nazis. In 1938 he wrote a letter to a Czech colleague Joseph Romadka in which he declared that soldiers who fought against the Third Reich were serving a Christian cause. Topic. Church dogmatics Barth's theology found its most sustained and compelling expression in his 13-volume magnum opus, The Church Dogmatics G.E.R. Kirchliche Dogmatik. Widely regarded as an important theological work, The Church Dogmatics represents the pinnacle of Barth's achievement as a theologian. Church Dogmatics runs to over 6 million words and 8,000 pages in English, over 9,000 in German one of the longest works of systematic theology ever written. The Church Dogmatics address four major doctrines, revelation, God, creation, and atonement or reconciliation. Barth had initially also intended to complete his dogmatics by addressing the doctrines of redemption and eschatology, but decided not to complete the project in the later years of his life. Later life and death After the end of the Second World War, Barth became an important voice in support both of German penitence and of reconciliation with churches abroad. 
Together with Hans Iwand, he authored the Darmstadt Statement in 1947 a more concrete statement of German guilt and responsibility for the Third Reich and Second World War than the 1945 Stuttgart Declaration of Guilt. In it, he made the point that the Church's willingness to side with anti-socialist and conservative forces had led to its susceptibility for National Socialist ideology. In the context of the developing Cold War, that controversial statement was rejected by anti-communists in the West who supported the CDU course of remilitarization, as well as by East German dissidents who believed that it did not sufficiently depict the dangers of communism. He was elected a foreign honorary member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 1950. In the 1950s, Barth sympathized with the peace movement and opposed German rearmament. Barth wrote a 1960 article for the Christian Century regarding the East-West Question, in which he denied any inclination toward Eastern communism and stated he did not wish to live under communism or wish anyone to be forced to do so. He acknowledged a fundamental disagreement with most of those around him, writing, I do not comprehend how either politics or Christianity require sick or even permit such a disinclination to lead to the conclusions which the West has drawn with increasing sharpness in the past fifteen years. I regard anti-communism as a matter of principle and evil even greater than communism itself." In 1962, Barth visited the United States and lectured at Princeton Theological Seminary, the University of Chicago, the Union Theological Seminary and the San Francisco Theological Seminary. He was invited to be a guest at the Second Vatican Council. At the time Barth's health did not permit him to attend. However, he was able to visit the Vatican and be a guest of the Pope in 1967, after which he wrote the small volume Ad Limina Apostolorum at the Threshold of the Apostles. Barth was featured on the cover of the April 20, 1962 issue of Time magazine, an indication that his influence had reached out of academic and ecclesiastical circles and into mainstream American religious culture. Barth died on December 10, 1968, at his home in Basel, Switzerland. The evening before his death, he had encouraged his lifelong friend Eduard Thernissin that he should not be downhearted, for things are ruled, not just in Moscow or in Washington or in Peking, but things are ruled, even here on earth, entirely from above, from heaven above. Topic. Theology Topic. Trinitarian focus One major objective of Barth is to recover the doctrine of the Trinity in theology from its putative loss in liberalism. His argument follows from the idea that God is the object of God's own self-knowledge, and revelation in the Bible means the self-unveiling to humanity of the God who cannot be discovered by humanity simply through its own intuition. God's revelation comes to man vertically from above Topic. Election. One of the most influential and controversial features of Barth's dogmatics was his doctrine of election Church Dogmatics 2, 2. Barth's theology entails a rejection of the idea that God chose each person to either be saved or damned based on purposes of the divine will, and it was impossible to know why God chose some and not others. Barth's doctrine of election involves a firm rejection of the notion of an eternal, hidden decree. In keeping with his Christocentric methodology, Barth argues that to ascribe the salvation or damnation of humanity to an abstract absolute decree is to make some part of God more final and definitive than God's saving act in Jesus Christ. God's absolute decree, if one may speak of such a thing, is God's gracious decision to be for humanity in the person of Jesus Christ. Drawing from the earlier Reformed tradition, Barth retains the notion of double predestination but makes Jesus himself the object of both divine election and reprobation simultaneously. Jesus embodies both God's election of humanity and God's rejection of human sin. While some regard this revision of the doctrine of election as an improvement on the Augustinian Calvinist doctrine of the predestination of individuals, critics, namely Brunner, have charged that Barth's view amounts to a soft universalism, thereby departing from Augustinian Calvinism. Barth's doctrine of objective atonement develops as he distances himself from Anselm of Canterbury's doctrine of the atonement. In the Epistle to the Romans, Barth endorses Anselm's idea that God who is robbed of his honor must punish those who robbed him. In Church Dogmatics I, too, Barth advocates divine freedom in the Incarnation with the support of Anselm's Cur Deus Homo. 
Barth holds that Anselm's doctrine of the atonement preserves both God's freedom and the necessity of Christ's incarnation. The positive endorsement of Anselmian motives in Cur Deus Homo continues in Church Dogmatics 2, 1. Barth maintains with Anselm that the sin of humanity cannot be removed by the merciful act of divine forgiveness alone. In Church Dogmatics IV, 1, however, Barth's doctrine of the atonement diverges from that of Anselm. By over-Christologizing the doctrine, Barth completes his formulation of objective atonement. He finalizes the necessity of God's mercy at the place where Anselm firmly establishes the dignity and freedom of the will of God. In Barth's view, God's mercy is identified with God's righteousness in a distinctive way where God's mercy always takes the initiative. The change in Barth's reception of Anselm's doctrine of the atonement is, therefore, alleged to show that Barth's doctrine entails support for universalism. Topic. Salvation Barth argued that previous perspectives on sin and salvation, influenced by strict Calvinist thinking, sometimes misled Christians into thinking that predestination set up humanity such that the vast majority of human beings were foreseen to disobey and reject God, with damnation coming to them as a matter of fate. Barth's view of salvation is centrally Christological, with his writings stating that in Jesus Christ the reconciliation of all of mankind to God has essentially already taken place and that through Christ man is already elect and justified. Though not an advocate of Christian universalism, strictly speaking, Barth asserted that eternal salvation for everyone, even those that reject God, is a possibility that is not just an open question but should be hoped for by Christians as a matter of grace. Specifically, he wrote, even though theological consistency might seem to lead our thoughts and utterances most clearly in this direction, we must not arrogate to ourselves that which can be given and received only as a free gift." Just hoping for total reconciliation, Barth, in the words of a later scholar, went a "...significant step beyond traditional theology." in that he argued against more conservative strains of Protestant Christianity in which damnation is seen as an absolute certainty for many or most people. To Barth, Christ's grace is central. Topic. Understanding of Mary Unlike many Protestant theologians, Barth wrote on the topic of Mariology the theological study of Mary. Barth's views on the subject agreed with much Roman Catholic dogma but he disagreed with the Catholic veneration of Mary. Aware of the common dogmatic tradition of the early Church, Barth fully accepted the dogma of Mary as the Mother of God, seeing a rejection of that title equivalent to rejecting the doctrine that Christ's human and divine natures are inseparable contra the Nestorian heresy. Through Mary, Jesus belongs to the human race. Through Jesus, Mary is Mother of God. Topic. Barth, liberals, and fundamentalists Although Barth's theology rejected German Protestant liberalism, his theology has usually not found favor with those at the other end of the theological spectrum, confessionalists and fundamentalists. His doctrine of the Word of God, for instance, holds that Christ is the Word of God, and does not proceed by arguing or proclaiming that the Bible must be uniformly historically and scientifically accurate, and then establishing other theological claims on that foundation. Some fundamentalist critics have joined liberals in referring to Barth as neo-Orthodox, because, while his theology retains most or all of the tenets of their understanding of Christianity, he is seen as rejecting the belief which is a linchpin of their theological system, biblical inerrancy. Such critics believe the written text must be considered to be historically accurate and verifiable and see Barth's view as a separation of theological truth from historical truth. Barth could respond by saying that the claim that the foundation of theology is biblical inerrancy is to use a foundation other than Jesus Christ, and that our understanding of Scripture's accuracy and worth can only properly emerge from consideration of what it means for it to be a true witness to the incarnate Word, Jesus. The relationship between Barth, liberalism, and fundamentalism goes far beyond the issue of inerrancy, however. From Barth's perspective, liberalism, as understood in the sense of the 19th century with Friedrich Schleiermacher and Hegel as its leading exponents and not necessarily expressed in any particular political ideology, is the divinization of human thinking. This, to him, inevitably leads one or more philosophical concepts to become the false god, thus attempting to block the true voice of the living god. This, in turn, leads to the captivity of theology by human ideology. 
In Barth's theology, he emphasizes again and again that human concepts of any kind, breadth or narrowness quite beside the point, can never be considered as identical to God's revelation. In this aspect, Scripture is also written, human language which bears witness to the self-revelation of God in Jesus Christ. Scripture cannot be considered as identical to God's self-revelation, which is properly only Jesus Christ. However, in his freedom and love, God truly reveals himself through human language and concepts, with a view toward their necessity in reaching fallen humanity. Thus Barth claims that Christ is truly presented in Scripture and the preaching of the Church, echoing a stand expressed in his native Swiss Reformed Church's Helvetic Confession of the 16th century. He opposes any attempts to closely relate theology and philosophy, although Barth consistently insists that he is not anti-philosophical. His approach in that respect is predominantly Christocentric, and is thus termed charismatic, as opposed to apologetic. Topic. Influence on Christian ethics Among many other areas, Barth has also had a profound influence on modern Christian ethics. He has influenced the work of ethicists such as Stanley Hoerwas, John Howard Yoder, Jacques Ellul and Oliver O'Donovan. Topic. Relationship with Charlotte von Kirschbaum Charlotte von Kirschbaum was Barth's mistress, secretary and theological assistant for more than three decades. When Barth first met her in 1924 he had already been married for 12 years and, in 1929, she moved into the Barth family household, which included his wife Nellie and five children. George Hunsinger summarizes the influence of von Kirschbaum on Barth's work. As his unique student, critic, researcher, advisor, collaborator, companion, assistant, spokesperson, and confidant, Charlotte von Kirschbaum was indispensable to him. He could not have been what he was, or have done what he did, without her." The long-standing work relationship was not without its difficulties. It caused offense among some of Barth's friends, as well as his mother. While Nellie supplied the household and the children, von Kirschbaum and Barth shared an academic relationship. The feminist scholar, Suzanne Selinger says, P. Art of any realistic response to the subject of Barth and von Kirschbaum must be anger. Because she has been largely unrecognized by Barthian scholars for her work. Barth lauds von Kirschbaum for her assistance in the preface of Church Dogmatics, Volume 3 The Doctrine of Creation Part 3, an article written in 2017 by Christiane Tietz originally a paper she delivered at the 2016 American Academy of Religion in San Antonio, Texas for the academic journal Theology Today engages letters released in both 2000 and 2008 written by Barth, Charlotte von Kirschbaum, and Nellie Barth, which discuss the complicated relationship between all three individuals that occurred over the span of 40 years. The letters published in 2008 between von Kirschbaum and Barth from 1925 to 1935 made public the deep, intense, and overwhelming love between these two human beings. Topic in literature In John Updike's Rogers version, Roger Lambert is a professor of religion. Lambert is influenced by the works of Karl Barth. That is the primary reason that he rejects his students' attempt to use computational methods to understand God. Harry Militia's The Discovery of Heaven makes mentions of Barth's church dogmatics, as does David Markson's The Last Novel. In the case of Militia and Markson, it is the ambitious nature of the church dogmatics that seems to be of significance. In the case of Updike, it is the emphasis on the idea of God as holy other that is emphasized. In Marilyn Robinson's Gilead, the preacher John Ames reveres Barth's Epistle to the Romans and refers to it as his favorite book other than the Bible. Whitaker Chambers cites Barth in nearly all his books, Witness p. 507, Cold Friday p. 194, and Odyssey of a Friend pp. 201, 231. Topic Center for Barth Studies Princeton Theological Seminary, where Barth lectured in 1962, houses the Center for Barth Studies, which is dedicated to supporting scholarship related to the life and theology of Karl Barth. The Barth Center was established in 1997 and sponsors seminars, conferences, and other events. It also holds the Karl Barth Research Collection, the largest in the world, which contains nearly all of Barth's works in English and German, several first editions of his works, and an original handwritten manuscript by Barth. Topic writings The Epistle to the Romans Der Romerbrief I, 1st ed., 1919. 
The Epistle to the Romans GER. Der Romerbrief. Zweit Fassing, 1922. E. C. Hoskins, Trans. London, Oxford University Press, 1933, 1968 ISBN 0-19-500294-6 The Word of God and the Word of Man GER. Das Wort Gottes und die Theologie, 1928. New York, Harper and Bros, 1957. ISBN 978 0 8446 8 The Word of God and Theology. Amy Marga, Trans. New York, T&T Clark, 2011. Preaching Through the Christian Year. H. Wells and J. McTavish, eds. Edinburgh, T&T Clark, 1978. ISBN 0-8028-1725-4 God Here and Now. London, Routledge, 1964. Fides Quarens Intellectum, Anselm's Proof of the Existence of God in the Context of His Theological Scheme written in 1931. I. W. Robertson, Trans. London, SCM, 1960, reprinted by Pickwick Publications 1985, ISBN 0-915138-75-1 Church and State. G. R. Howe, Trans. London, SCM, 1939. The Church and the War. A. H. Front, Trans. New York, Macmillan, 1944. Prayer According to the Catechisms of the Reformation. S. F. Terrian, Trans. Philadelphia, Westminster, 1952 also published as, Prayer and Preaching. London, SCM, 1964. The Humanity of God, J. N. Thomas and T. Weiser, Trans. Richmond, Virginia, John Knox Press, 1960. ISBN 0-8042-0612-0 Evangelical Theology, An Introduction. Grand Rapids, Michigan, Eerdmans, 1963. The Christian Life. Church Dogmatics IV, 4, Lecture Fragments. Grand Rapids, Michigan, Eerdmans, 1981. ISBN 0 567 09320 4. ISBN 0 8028 3523 6. The Word in This World, Two Sermons by Karl Barth. Edited by Kurt I. Johansson. Regent Publishing, Vancouver, BC, Canada, 2007. No Angels of Darkness and Light. The Christian Century, January 20, 1960, p. 72. Reprinted in Contemporary Moral Issues. H. K. Gervitz, ed. Belmont, California, Wadsworth, 1963. pp. 6-8. The Goodingen Dogmatics, Instruction in the Christian Religion, Volume 1. G. W. Bromiley, Trans. Grand Rapids, Michigan, Eerdmans, 1991. ISBN 0-8028-2421-8 Dogmatics in Outline 1947 Lectures, Harper Perennial, 1959, ISBN 0-06-130056-X A Unique Time of God, Karl Barth's World War I Sermons, William Klempa, Editor. Louisville, Kentucky, Westminster John Knox Press. Topic the Church Dogmatics in English Translation Volume 1 Part 1, Doctrine of the Word of God, Prolegomena to Church Dogmatics, Hardcover, ISBN 0-567-09013-2, Softcover, ISBN 0-567-05059-9, German, 1932, Volume 1 Part 2, Doctrine of the Word of God, Hardcover, ISBN 0-567-09012-4, Softcover, ISBN 0-567-05059-9, 0696 German 1938 Volume 2 Part 1 The Doctrine of God The Knowledge of God The Reality of God Hardcover ISBN 0-567-09021-3 Softcover ISBN 0-567-05169-2 German 1940 Volume 2 Part 2 The Doctrine of God The Election of God The Command of God Hardcover ISBN 0-567-09022-1 Softcover ISBN ISBN 0 to 567 x German, 1942, Volume 3, Part 1, The Doctrine of Creation, The Work of Creation, Hardcover, ISBN 0 567 09031 0, Softcover, ISBN 0 567 05079 3, German, 1945, Volume 3, Part 2, The Doctrine of Creation, The Creature, Hardcover, ISBN 0 567 09032 9, 
Softcover, ISBN 0-567-05089-0 German, 1948 Volume 3 Part 3, The Doctrine of Creation, The Creator and His Creature, Hardcover, ISBN 0-567-09033-7, Softcover, ISBN 0-567-05099-8 German, 1950 Volume 3 Part 4, The Doctrine of Creation, The Command of God the Creator, Hardcover, ISBN 0-567-09034-5, Softcover, ISBN 0 567 05109 9, German, 1951, Volume 4, Part 1, The Doctrine of Reconciliation, Hardcover, ISBN 0 567 09041 8, Softcover, ISBN 0 567 05129 3, German, 1953, Volume 4, Part 2, Doctrine of Reconciliation, Jesus Christ the Servant as Lord, Hardcover, ISBN 0 567 09042 6, Softcover, ISBN 0 567 05139 0, German, 1955, Volume 4, Part 3, First Half, Doctrine of Reconciliation, Jesus Christ the True Witness, Hardcover, ISBN 0 567 09043 4, Softcover, ISBN 0 567 05189 7, German, 1959, Volume 4, Part 3, Second Half, Doctrine of Reconciliation, Jesus Christ the True Witness, Hardcover, ISBN 0-567-09044-2, Softcover, ISBN 0-567-05149-8, German, 1959, Volume 4 Part 4 Unfinished, Doctrine of Reconciliation, The Foundation of the Christian Life Baptism, Hardcover, ISBN 0-567-09045-0, Softcover, ISBN 0-567-05159-5, German, 1967, Volume 5, Church Dogmatics, Contents and Indexes, Hardcover, ISBN 0-567-09046-9, Softcover, ISBN 0-567-05119-6 Church Dogmatics, 14 Volume Set, Softcover, ISBN 0-567-05809-3 Church Dogmatics, A Selection, with Intro, by H. Galwitzer, 1961, Westminster John Knox Press 1994, ISBN 0-664-25550 7 Church Dogmatics, Dual Language German and English, Books with CD-ROM, ISBN 0-567-08374-8 8 Church Dogmatics, Dual Language German and English, CD-ROM only, ISBN 0-567-08364-0 On Religion. Edited and translated by Garrett Green. London, T. and T. Clark, 2006. Topic audio Evangelical Theology, American Lectures 1962 given by Barth in Chicago, Illinois and Princeton, New Jersey, ISBN 978-0-9785738-0-5 and ISBN 0-9785738-0-3 Topic References Topic Sources Witness to an Ancient Truth. Time. April 20, 1962. Retrieved 17 November 2012. Bradshaw, Timothy, 1988. Trinity and Ontology, A Comparative Study of the Theologies of Karl Barth and Wolfhart Pannenberg. Rutherford House Books, Reprint, Lewiston, Lampada, Edwin Mellon Press for Rutherford House, Edinburgh, 1992. Brighton, Carl E. 2008. That All May Believe, A Theology of the Gospel and the Mission of the Church. Grand Rapids, Michigan, Eerdmans. ISBN 0802862396X. Retrieved 19 October 2015. Bromiley, Jeffrey William. An Introduction to the Theology of Karl Barth. Grand Rapids, Michigan, William B. Eerdmans, 1979. Buchlin, Hadrian, Entre Culture du Consensus et Critique Sociale. Les Intellectuels de Gauche dans la Suisse de la Pré-Guerre, These de Doctorate, Université de Lausanne, 2015. Bush, Eberhard. Karl Barth, His Life from Letters and Autobiographical Texts. Minneapolis, Fortress Press, 1976. 2004, The Great Passion, An Introduction to Karl Barth's Theology, Grand Rapids, Michigan, William B. Eerdmans. Chung, Paul S. Karl Barth, God's Word in Action. James Clark & Co., Cambridge, 2008, ISBN 978-0-227-17266-7. Chung, Sung Wook. Admiration and Challenge, Karl Barth's Theological Relationship with John Calvin. New York, Peter Lang, 2002. 
ISBN 978-0-820-45680-5. Chung, Sung Wook, ed. Karl Barth and Evangelical Theology, Convergences and Divergences. Grand Rapids, Michigan, Baker Academic, 2008, ISBN 978-0-801-03127-4. Clark, Gordon. Karl Barth's Theological Method. Trinity Foundation, 1997, 2nd ed., 1963. ISBN 0-940931-51-6. Fids, Paul. The Status of Women in the Thought of Karl Barth, in Janet Martin Soskais, ed., After Eve, Alternative Title After Eve, Women, Theology and the Christian Tradition, 1990, pp. 138-55, Marshall Pickering Fink, Heinrich. Karl Barth und die Bewegung Phrase Deutschland in der Schweiz, Doctoral Dissertation, Karl Barth und die Bewegung Phrase Deutschland in der Schweiz, Dissertation zur Erlangung des Akademischen Grades Dr. Scientia Theologia, dr.sc.theol, Vorgelecht dem Senat des Wissenschaftlichen Rates der Humboldt Universität zu Berlin, Berlin, H. Fink, Self Publisher, 1978. Galley, Mark. 2000. Neo Orthodoxy, Karl Barth. Christianity Today. Gerardini, Brunero. A Domanda Respond. In Dialogo con Karl Barth sul su Domande a Roma A Question Answered. In Dialogue with Karl Barth on his Questions in Rome. Frigento, Italy, Casa Mariana Editrice, 2011. ISBN 978-88-9056-111-5. Gagniliot, Mark S. 2009. Karl Barth and the Fifth Gospel, Barth's Theological Exegesis of Isaiah. Farnham, Ashgate. ISBN 0754658562. Retrieved 19 October 2015. Gorringe, Timothy. Karl Barth, Against Hegemony. Oxford, Oxford University Press, 1999. Hunsinger, George. How to Read Karl Barth, The Shape of His Theology. Oxford, Oxford University Press, 1993. J. Jin Kim. Die Universalität der Versernung im Gottesbund. Zur Biblischen Begründung der Bundestheologie in der Kirchlichen Dogmatik Karl Barths, Lit Verlag, 1992. Mangina, Joseph L. Karl Barth, Theologian of Christian Witness, Louisville, Westminster John Knox, 2004. McCormick, Bruce. Karl Barth's Critically Realistic Dialectical Theology, Its Genesis and Development, 1909-1936. Oxford University Press, USA, March 27, 1997, ISBN 978-0-19-826956-4 McKenney, Gerald. The Analogy of Grace, Karl Barth's Moral Theology, Oxford, Oxford University Press, 2010. ISBN 0-19958267-X. Oakes, Kenneth. Karl Barth on Theology and Philosophy. Oxford, Oxford University Press, 2012. Oakes, Kenneth. Reading Karl Barth, a companion to Karl Barth's Epistle to the Romans. Eugene, Cascade, 2011. Webster, John. Barth, 2nd ed., London, Continuum, 2004. Webster, John, ed. The Cambridge Companion to Karl Barth. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 2000. Topic external links Publications by and about Karl Barth in the catalog Helveticat of the Swiss National Library Top 10 Theologians, Karl Barth, Reclaiming the Mind, Parchment and Pen, August 2011. The Center for Barth Studies, Princeton Theological Seminary, archived from the original on January 25, 2013. Barth Literature Search Project, NL, PTHU, archived from the original on 2 March 2012. Complete bibliography of literature by and about Karl Barth. Karl Barth Reading Room, with extensive links to online primary and secondary sources, CA, Tyndale Seminary. Karl Barth. Time. April 20, 1962. Karl Barth Archive Primer on Karl Barth's Church Dogmatics One Year with Karl Barth A Year-Long Project Promoting Discussion and Application of Barth's Church Dogmatics. Article on Barth and Visual Art Karl Barth, Courageous Theologian Article from Christianity Today Karl Barth Hub to Organizations and Resources Associated with Karl Barth Newspaper clippings about Karl Barth in the 20th Century Press Archives of the German National Library of Economics ZBW.